Good evening, everybody. I'm so happy to be here with you tonight, and thank you so much. And I'm so excited because we're going to be hosting the most wonderful, amazing woman, Lana Perilla. And I know you all know her, and you all love her. I love her too. And before she comes on, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. We're so excited. Ah! Surprise! <laughs> Didn't mean to interrupt there. you. Thank you. How are you managing that during the coronavirus? I've actually just let it go natural, which is this is natural. This is natural. I mean, How I have to do a little bit here. You? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to talk to you. It's so great. Oh my Likewise. god, I've said a million things. I want to talk to you about. So, first of all, I'm so happy that everybody's joining us, especially now. Everybody's nervous about whether we're going back to work or whether we are going back into real life or whether we're going to continue this quarantine and social distancing. And I wanted us both to celebrate Mother's Day with everyone and tell everybody that I'm so pleased to share this moment with you because nothing is more important than our mothers and we as mothers those of us that are mothers we want to congratulate every other mother because that's the best job of all and i want to tell my daughters michelle and ashley that i love you so much and no matter what you're the most important people in my life love you happy so, mother's day Happy Mother's Day. I know you have this amazing relationship with your mom. I, I just left her. <laughs> yes, really? I do. And I was on the fence about um, seeing her because of obvious, you know, the situation. Yeah, yeah. But I've been tested now twice for COVID right. and antibodies, and I've come back negative. So I thought, okay. I think I can see my mom. So I, I went over there. I made some, I made a meatloaf last night and I brought it to her and beautiful flowers. And, oh, I forgot to give her, her the card is in my bag. That's okay. <laughs> I forgot the card. I kept telling her we went to the park with my dog Lola and Aww. went for a beautiful walk around the lake. And it was, you know, really, really great to see her because I haven't been able to. But I after know. I was Isn't tested, I felt like that you can't spend time with your family. Yeah, I, it's it's very challenging. I I only saw her once up until today, and I I brought groceries to her, and I cried after because I didn't hug her. I didn't I didn't know where I was at that point, and I hadn't been tested, so I wanted to just be really careful. But it was very yeah, strange. No, but but there's so many things people are saying about the tests too, that you're only as good as this one day when you're tested negative and nobody knows about tomorrow, right? Yeah, I know. I mean, it's I know. like that's, you have to be tested very often. But tell me, you had the antibodies test, right? I did. I did. And you tested negative or positive for, for so you have the antibodies? I don't. don't. I've tested negative across the board for, which I was kind of bummed about. There was a part of me that was hoping <laughs> that I would have tested positive for antibodies, but I don't know how good these tests are, how, how accurate they are. Well, they say that if you're taking, you know, any kind of um, vitamins for your hair or skin, biotin, it camouflages the tests. So nobody okay. knows what the results are. So, but I, I am the same. I don't know because, you know, having the antibodies kind of makes you feel safer, like you're not going to get it, but then you don't know how long it's going to last, you know? So either way, you are sort of like taking a risk no matter what. Well, there's so much uncertain about what this virus is. And, you know, we've heard that it lives on plastic for X amount of hours or days. And then we've heard, no, that's not true anymore. And so, so much of it is uncertain that you can't really rely or depend on and on the research or information that's coming our way right now. Exactly. So we want to tell all of you, just be careful. We want you to feel safe. We want you to be happy and healthy. 
And so yeah. it's important that we just talked about it for a moment because I know all of you are sharing the same questions. So be safe. Yes, be safe and be, and be responsible. It's very important. Yeah. So Lana, let's talk about you, you know, because you are amazing. I mean, you come from a family where your father is an athlete, a baseball player. Your mom is an artist. And yes. your aunt is a Broadway actress. So you kind of, your DNA must be like going wild. You know, because <laughs> you're a mixture, and you're a mixture of Italian and Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. Am that's I where I think, that's where this hair comes from. <laughs> yeah. That's where I love the hair, from. so let's have more of that. Thank um, you. But so I love yours I too, by the way. You have, uh, you have such yeah, beautiful full hair. Straight, so I actually <laughs> curled it with my hairbrush and my blower nowadays we have to do it all ourselves so it's <laughs> but it's fun isn't it we're trying all new things so you know i mean knowing this history that you have um tell me about your childhood and what was it that motivated you to get into the entertainment industry and want to live vicariously through other characters and what is it inside of you that felt a sense of comfort moving in that direction and growing in that direction? Well, I was influenced by my aunt, who is the Broadway actress, who's also been uh, a very, uh, you know, uh, successful television and film actress as well. She worked with everybody, like Gene Wilder and Anne Bancroft and and Mel Brooks and, you know, Tom DeLuise and was wow. on Rhoda and, you know, Colucci's apartment and Taxi and who's the boss and ever, I mean, you name it, she's been working in this industry for so long and Broadway. Um, so we grew up in a very artistic family on my mother's side. My mother's been painting since she was younger. My grandfather was always making these really interesting artistic projects. Like our house had things on the wall, art on the wall and um, art in the backyard. And my grandfather was a jack of all trades. He was a bit of a beatnik growing up. He was a total rebel. And my grandmother was very much ahead of her time. They were both born in Brooklyn. So their parents were born in Sicily, but they were born in Brooklyn. and. Like my grandmother was juicing back in the 40s, wow. you know, and, and she was very health conscious and we ate a lot of fish and a lot of, so my mother, I grew up very health conscious and diet oriented. Um, as a kid, I was always sketching and drawing. I was looking up to my mother. My dad was an athlete, but he also used to sketch and play these different characters and pretend to be different characters. So I was just surrounded by imagination and letting your imagination sort of fly in all different directions. And I was encouraged to pretend to be other people. My grandfather did a lot of uh, home videos on an eight millimeter film. We came from a very funny background. Um, one of the famous movies was, you know, the attack of the killer handkerchief, you know, and so, <laughs> You would see this handkerchief fly, you know, in frame and the camera's on my grandmother and she's cooking at the stove and then she would turn around and get smothered by the handkerchief and die, you know? It was like this <laughs> really comedic household and um, my father was the same. I have great footage of him, you know, pretending to be some other character and making these silly faces and and on top of it, he was an, an incredible athlete. So we were, I had how sports it, and how was art. It for you? How was it for you and him, him being an athlete? What was it like as a child being with a father who's an athlete like that? You know, it's really funny. I and mean, this is such a great question because it was very stressful. He wanted boys and my sister and I, our girls. <laughs> so it was like, we grew up, you know, 
kind of forced to play softball. It wasn't a dream of mine. It wasn't something I gravitated towards. I, I liked volleyball. I loved basketball. Um, and, and softball I enjoyed, but I was, it was more like forced upon me. He was at every game. He was at every practice. Wow. The, the fun part about it was, you know, he was a pro. So my, my team would get really excited when he would show up and they would want him to hit a ball and the ball would go lost. We can never find those balls. But, you know, so it was fun, but it was also nerve wracking. And um, I felt like I was never good enough. Oh, really? Up. Yeah. As in, because you know, in he sports. was such a great athlete. I, yeah. I know he played for the Philadelphia team, right? Yes, he did. Oh, my God. That must have been amazing, though, for him to spend so much time that he felt so like your daddy was there for you, you know? You know, you're right. I did. And that's one of the beautiful memories that I have with my father is even though in the moment it was terrifying to experience him there at every practice. And then we would go from practice to then practice with him. So I would have double practice. And, um, and it was wonderful to have that support and have a father there at every single game. I, I, I have heard stories from many people that said, God, my father was always working or he right, never right. you know, showed up. And um, so looking back, I'm, I'm really grateful that he was there for me. And it did help me become a better player. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, but every- I didn't like it that much. But when <laughs> right. did you lose your father? I lost him when I was 16. Oh my God, that must have been tough. It was very tough. It was tragic how I lost him because he was, uh, he was murdered. So it was, um, it was very tragic. It was horrible to experience. Oh my God, I had no idea. How yeah. did you deal with that? Well, I mean, it's been years of learning how to deal with that and really understanding the issues in those communities with which I lived in um, which is a really beautiful segment into what I'm currently working on and this project it's called Project Lead with NYC Together. And it was these Black Latino communities that just, you know, were really impacted by then the crack epidemic, by the, the, the crime rates were high. And it was very challenging being in that, in that area. And my dad was really at the wrong place at the wrong time. And he was really uh, an innocent in the situation. And so um, what, it, what it's done for me is it's made me really want to educate these communities and help these, the youth in these communities to, to sort of pull out of, of, you know, these situations that they find themselves in, which is, you know, they don't have a, a way out. They need programs. They need counselors. And so I feel like, I'm kind of a really perfect example of a, of a child who, who was in situations like that where, you know, I didn't, we didn't have those organizations. We didn't have those programs. I didn't have that support. And I really want to help those kids that are in those situations to give them an alternative. Because, because you've gone through the experience. You'd have so much to say and yes. to help people. Yeah. But it's interesting that you're working on a project that deals with that. How did you deal? Did you deal? Did you? You must have had enormous anger for a while, that that somehow you lost your father for no reason. How did you? Oh, deal I with did. That? Oh, I did. I mean, I went through. First of all, I was a teenager, so I hated right. everybody and everything, and I was angry at. You know, I believe in God, so but then I was very angry at God, and I stopped believing in God for years. I said, well, why would God do this to me? This is so not godly. And I didn't understand. And so I, I, so I rebelled. I was very difficult. I was very angry. I didn't want to be around the family. Um, and my only escape really was my art. And Working. so, yeah, I found a way to sort of channel all of that energy into working through characters. <laughs> No, and, you know, and it's funneling that through through my characters. It's interesting because I, when I went through my divorce, 
the one thing that saved me is because I'm a writer. Yes. And the one thing that saved me is writing. I wrote a book and I literally lived vicariously through the characters and it saved me because I didn't have to deal as much with the pain by escaping into other characters. And I literally, I would write and then I would wake up almost and I would realize, oh my God, now I'm back in my own life, you know, because it was like coming out of the zone. So I understand what you're saying. So you dealt with it through vicariously living through different characters. But what was it that woke you up and eliminated the anger from you? Um, really just trusting that, you know, I can't control these things that happen in our lives. Like, I'm not alone in the world who, you know, a, a child who lost a father tragically. Um, I wasn't targeted. You know, I wasn't, it wasn't like I did anything bad in my life to deserve this. I had to work through that with several hours of, of therapy, reading several self-help books, and also sort of looking at this and working with my father in the ways that I have through dreams, through communication, through prayer, and trusting that all of this has happened for a reason. It has shaped the woman that I am today. And I have to look at this as, it's not necessarily a good thing, but I just have to trust that this has happened for a reason. And now I have to take this and do something good with it. No, I, I, I completely understand. In fact, I was getting a bit teary because <laughs> I, it's hard to, I understand it so well because my father also passed away in an accident and it was the hardest thing in the world for me to go through. I couldn't yeah. sleep for four months and yeah. literally I would wake up every night in cold sweat and you just have to believe. What helped me was actually I turned to spirituality mm. and it was just trusting in God that really helped me through, but it was really difficult. So I understand what you went through. So was that kind of why you got so close to your mom? Um, partially, I, I've always, um, I've always been close to my mother. You know, my parents separated when I was young. I spent most of my time with my mom and then I lived with my dad. I did go back and forth, but my mom and I actually have gotten closer over the last, I would say 10 years, 10 to 15 years. And, um, and that was something that she and I diligently worked on. I knew that it, having a relationship with my mother and understanding her and, and getting close to her was a relationship that I wanted. And so we developed a, a way of communicating where I'm very open with my mom. And I, I stopped having like the expectations out of my mom, like wanting her to do this and wanting her to be a certain way. And just really loving her for who she Acceptance. is. Yeah, and it really brought us to another uh, place in our relationship where we we have a lot in common. We 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 share a lot of the same interests, and so things that we do together is it's like she's my favorite person to travel with. <laughs> I know I heard that you were going, you, you were going to take her to Italy to celebrate her yeah. roots and I think you did right I did, did yeah that. how was that I had the best time truly I I love her you know she's so cute because she never complains it's never too much it's always enough she never wants anything more than what you give her she's never asked for anything like she's just so enjoyable she likes to drink wine we like to drink wine together She's extremely athletic herself. She has an incredible amount of stamina. She dances like three nights a week. You know, she's <laughs> 76 and she looks like she's in her early 60s. She's just, she's a superwoman. And I'm really, you know, spending today with her. I just look at her and I just love her so much. We, she'd never been to Sicily and it was her biggest dream. And I said, well, I'm taking you. 
And I brought her to the town Via Bete, which is where her grandparents were from. She'd always wanted to go there. And it's a small little town in Sicily. And we went and she was just like a little girl, you oh. know, like, like seeing something for the first time. She was just so bright eyed. And I'm really fortunate to have had God bless the success that I've had that's afforded me to give her the things that she always desired and dreamed of having for herself. I, I love you talking about it because I know when people listen, they really get the feeling. I mean, I get all the love from you that you're mm -hmm. feeling. And I, I hope this really helps a lot of people understand how important mothers are in our lives. Yes. I mean, I'm hoping my own daughters, Ashley and Michelle, listen. <laughs> But it's going to make so me cry. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's like I was, I was almost crying too. Anyway, but let's talk about, just so that I won't burst into tears, let's talk about <laughs> okay. some of these amazing characters that you've played. I mean, the dream, the dreams that people have when they watch what I do as president of a television network and the things we put out and what you do, creating characters, but the dream is the fairy tale. Now you were fortunate enough to be in Once Upon a Time, which is the combination of every fairy tale. And you're playing, you know, this evil queen, but evil queen that has sort of reasoning for every evil thing that she does. <laughs> but and I was yeah. waiting for the love you know, of her life to come into her life and change everything. But you gave her lots of color. So I, I want you to talk about this character and what he did in your life. Well, you know, speaking about um, using sort of your life and finding ways to sort of channel things through characters, it's almost, it becomes a very cathartic experience. Even when you were writing your book it's like you're you're sort of living vicariously through them but on a very unconscious subconscious level you're healing it's in these the wounds. zone i call it the zone it's the zone but you're also healing some things yes. inside oh absolutely and yeah and um i found with regina i never want to judge you can't judge your characters. You can't. You have to understand the origin of their behavior, why they do these things. And so even though she committed so many horrific acts, I had to understand where does this come from? And when I went to her pain and I went to her sorrow and despair, I actually found, found a, a great amount of compassion for her. And I fell in love with her and I just wanted to serve her right by telling her story not just through anger, but through vulnerability. And, and you did. Yes. And I, and I knew that that would sustain. Because if you, only, if you only show this sort of evil, you know, angry, vindictive person, that's a very limiting uh, amount of emotions. You can't, no one's going to want to watch that consistently. It's going to be a massive turnoff. But if you show the why, why is she doing this? And you also show her sort of inner struggle with her decisions and her actions. Then she becomes more relatable and more human. Yeah, and I saw that. I saw, I was actually surprised by some of the choices you made as an actor, you know, and I love the fact that you were so honest with your character, you know, that it really emerged. And I know you've been awarded for it and all of that stuff, but there's something about the fairy tale element of what we're watching that gives us the good and evil that compete with each with each other. <laughs> yeah. And you were able to embody that in one character. So, you know, my frustration was I wanted her to grow more because I thought felt there was so much room, you know, for her to become you know, because we grow through growth and there was so much that as a writer, I felt like, oh my God, it could have been this and it could have been that, you know. So yeah. what about you? Where did you want to take her? I know it was limited because you have no control, but where would you have taken her? 
you know, well, she, um, she did reach a, a really beautiful level of um, learning how to deal with both her darkness and her light. And for many, many seasons, she rejected her darkness. In the beginning, she really embraced it and thought that that was what was going to bring her happiness is being angry and, you know, uh, uh, forcing her way through situations and, and threatening people. But with her son, Henry, the fear of losing that love is yes. really what started to change her. And I feel that that was the best gift that they could have given to that character because then she became, she started her healing path. She started making amends and she started a lot of self-reflection and looking within going, okay, I really need to take ownership of these things and I need to start to do things differently if I want a different outcome. And I really, so I, I, I feel like she did get to some place of, of redemption, not only with others, but within herself. And, oh, I agree. Yeah, and um, I, I think I would have liked to have had her find love again. Yeah. And, and that would have been beautiful. Uh, and I think if this show continued, we probably would have gotten there. Um, I think what happens when these shows sort of are abruptly Stop. ended, yeah, it's like they try to sort of wrap up a happy ending. How do we get there? How do we get there? I think in their minds, they would have wanted a couple more seasons to develop, you know, a new love for Regina after Robin Hood was killed and have her on that journey of maybe, you know, finding a way to, you know, uh, grow her family, maybe have, have a biological child somehow. Um, yes. You know, I, these are dreams that I think she wanted, even though she felt very content with, with Henry and loved her son. That was her son, you know, blood or not, no blood, like he was her son. Right. Um, but I, I do think that she would have loved to have explored a bit more with love and have it be successful and long lasting. No, I agree. And you know, there's so many questions that people are wanting to ask, but before I go into <laughs> questions, sure. I, I, I really want to know something. You've played so many characters. You've built such a portfolio. But, and I'm sure all of those experiences are inside your core now. So where are you going with it? What is it? You talked about the project that you're involved with right now. And I'd love to know where you're going as, a, as an artist. Well, you know, funny enough, I was working very, very hard to play Roxy Hart on Broadway. And um, yeah, and it was uh, just a matter of scheduling. Um, and we were in the works of scheduling and we were working also on Velma. And um, so that was happening. And I, and I really wanted to move into theater again because I hadn't done it since I was quite young. And so since August, I've been training. Oh my and goodness. I know, and I, I'm just so heartbroken because there were all these Roxies that were booked up and we were trying to figure out where it was going to fit in. And it probably was going to be towards like October, November of this year. But now with Broadway being on hold and all the other Roxies that were lined up to play, it's really kind of set everything further back for me. So I'm not sure if or when that will happen, but that's, my heart was so broken because I had the big, the biggest dream was to sing and dance on Broadway. I mean, it's every actor's dream. Oh, absolutely. Especially because of your aunt. And your yeah. Inspiration. And also just to say, you know, I, I can do theater and I have done theater and I, and I miss doing theater and I was, I just want to get back to that. Um, but simultaneously, I was also working on my directing because I, I got to direct on Once Upon a Time. And right. so there's a short that we were working on. There's another movie that I'm hoping to produce that, I'm, that I've been cast as uh, the female lead on. And it's a romantic comedy, which is people haven't oh, that seen would me. Be great for you. Yeah. And I, oh, I, I love comedy. I started my career in comedy. And, you know, Regina was the, the sort of uh, 
the humorous out of all the characters. She had those and, funny one-liners. And she had, had some great moments of comedy with her. I mean, yeah. just the unexpected and the way you sometimes just stood there and let it breathe. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm cracking out because it was so funny. You know, but let's, uh, let's get some questions because I know everybody is trying sure. to get to you. Oh, so, of course. Okay, so... Um, here we are. Uh, Karen, no, Gina, I don't know. Where, where, wait, wait a minute. Okay. Um, I don't know oh. who it is because it's Emma Swan. Um, <laughs> la, she's asking if you speak Portuguese. I so wish I spoke, spoke Portuguese, Portuguese because there are so many beautiful fans in Brazil and I really, really wish that I could speak to them. But I, all I know is te amo and obrigado. Obrigado. I have a obrigado. So that's the word. Uh, that's the word. <laughs> and then now we have, I, I don't know the name of this it's person. Girl. Disney Tangled Gore, whatever. <laughs> okay. um, what was the hardest scene you had to do to feel for once? Well, I would say one of the hardest scenes I had to film for Once Upon a Time was the scene with, uh, with Regina's father in the underworld when he comes back. Um, and she gets to confront her father after she had killed him years ago. And that was, that was the hardest scene for me to film for, for many reasons, just uh, not only for Regina seeing her father for the first time after she killed him, but also just for Lana and me having to, you know, has have dealt with a father, you know, who, who was tragically taken from me and, and have always wished and prayed that I had an opportunity to see him one more time. You're going to make me cry again. I'm going yeah. to the next question. <laughs> Sorry, please do. <laughs> so now from beautiful underscore Perilla. I don't know who that is, but obviously you do. <laughs> I like the name. <laughs> Would you do a Swan Queen spin-off if you could, Lana? I absolutely would do one. Absolutely. Do you know what Swan Queen is? Are you familiar? No. Okay, so Swan Queen is the, uh, the dream of, of uh, Emma Swan and Regina Mills becoming a couple. So two women. Oh, in a, okay, it's okay. the two mothers. And um, I don't know if they will ever write that, but um, if there was one, I would absolutely be open to it. That would be interesting because, you know, what I was thinking about is here we are celebrating Mother's Day and we're talking about, um, you know, Regina as a mother and that motivated her to move from being one thing into the other. And so I think it's interesting to think about to women that's in in that sort of unparametered reality you know that's interesting and uh, what was your reaction when you read the robin Ho that robin hood was going to die i was devastated for many reasons one uh tell us, for, tell for, us for regina especially because she was about to lose the love of her life and secondly, for myself, because Sean McGuire and I are so close, and he's been one of my favorite love interests uh, that I've had to play, uh, in t you know, in, in, on television. And um, I was going to miss him. I was really going to miss him, and I did. And I, I really did miss him. So that was, uh, that was, it was. I cried pretty hard when he when on his last Aww. day. Yeah, I, I, I fell um. apart. So here's one interesting one from Swan underscore Queen underscore Love underscore RP. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you be from any TV show? Oh, wow. Uh, who would I be from any TV show? Um, I would probably love to do anything that um, Jessica Lange has done on American Horror Story. Because she gets to play all these different characters, and she's one of my favorite actresses. Love her career. I just think it's phenomenal, and I love you her. You know, it's interesting you say that, because I think her choices are about experiencing. And mm -hmm. that, to me, is the ultimate as an artist. 
to be able to reach something, some plateau that you never thought you could. So, and to be that. able to work with Ryan Murphy is a dream of mine. Oh my God, yes. I mean, <laughs> um, so this one, this person is what? Leden, Leden, Ledenisa Ramos. Ledenisa Ramos. Um, have you ever considered writing a book about your experiences? Yes, I have, but I think I need to wait another maybe 20 years to do so. Oh, I feel I like that's a project a little bit later I want to do in my life. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, here's an interesting one um, from V.S. Morrison. Lana, do you prefer reading or writing? Um, yeah, that's a tough one because I, I really love both. <laughs> I love reading um, and I love writing, but my writing is, is more my journaling and personal thoughts and feelings I like to work through. Um, although I will say I just started writing a short, so I'm writing a second short actually, but I, I think I prefer reading right now, but we'll see if I, as I develop but, as a but writer. You know, it's, as a writer, I have to tell you something. It's interesting. I used to read, 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 and I would lose myself in every book. And I hated finishing the book and getting to the end because it stopped my life within the book. But somehow, when I started really writing, all of a sudden, the experience of being in the zone was so satisfying that it's interesting to be in that space because it gives you so much. So I, I recommend that you write because you have had some unbelievable experiences and you, your depth, which I can feel just looking into your eyes, I can see such soulfulness mm. that I think you have a lot to say. And, I, you know, and writing a journal is like writing a book. You basically let go. I mean, I'm always surprised when I finish writing and I read it and went, oh, my God, did I write that? <laughs> and then right. I think I could never write again. It's like mm. actors think they could never do the, perform again the, to the same level that they have excelled in you know it's yeah. it's always new and unknown but we have from regina thank Scott. you thank you for that that's really inspiring and um i have countless journals you should see i have about five journals completely filled for regina and all that i've written for her so um i i, would I, I think i need to do yeah something right about my life because regina is such an interesting character. There's so many levels that could be written about that, the other sides and the other facets of that character that mm -hmm. you, I could see you developing into as you're watching the series. There's so much you have to say that mm -hmm. I, would, I would do something with that because you really gave a gift when you were performing. Uh, and so I, I feel like it's something, I, I told you, I felt like it was unfinished, you know, even though they tried to finish it, you know, and tie up all the knots. Yeah, um, I So we Thank have Regina, it's, it's, it's true. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Regina's <laughs> cult. Yeah, Regina's cult. What was your favorite season of? Once Upon a Time. Yes, Once Upon a Time. Hmm. That's a tough one, but I, um, I like, I love season one for all the reasons that it was brand new and it was so exciting because we never knew what was going to happen. And when the curse lifted, it was like, oh my God. I mean, it was so unexpected. Um, and then I really loved season six because uh, it was the first time Regina got to confront the evil queen and seeing the duality between the two characters and playing opposite myself the entire season was a very uh, educational experience for me. I grew a lot as an artist. Schizo, right? Yes, <laughs> totally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Sophia.w.g um, is asking, out of all the characters you've played, which one do you identify with most? Oh, wow. Um, Wow, that's probably a big one. yeah. I, I you know there's it's a difficult one because I I really have a little bit of all of them in me. 
you know, Trina was the advocate for open marriage. And even though that's not my lifestyle, her open mind and how she sees the world and without judgment and how she accepts everyone for who they are, that's a huge part of who I am. Um, I played a, a trauma surgeon and that character with her beautiful heart and how she wanted to help people is such a huge part of me. Regina, um, you know, the temper, that's definitely a part of me. But then there's also her, her depth of lo to love is, um, is also another part of me. So I, I, that's a tough one. I, I feel like I relate to many of them. Yeah. So, you know, it's really interesting. You just mentioned, you know, a first responder and we're thinking and praying for all the first responders right now. And, um, I was just, because I, go, I went to have the antibodies test and I was at UCLA hospital and I was looking at all those people that are dedicating their lives, moving around in those suits and the masks and the gloves. And, you know, even though everyone that comes in gets tested, you know, the temperature and all of that, they're risking their lives every day. Mm -hmm. And I just have so much admiration for those people who choose as their profession to go the extra mile for us. And, you know, we, this, this coronavirus has helped us appreciate them more and more. And in a way, you know, we're appreciating family more, we're appreciating mm -hmm. the earth more, because the earth is taking a breath of fresh air, you know, and we're appreciating each other more and we're much more loving so I think that's the positive side, but definitely the first responders. There was a um, beautiful question that I wanted, what was it? Um, what was the, your, favorite your favorite character character? from um, uh, Once Upon a Time besides? Besides uh, her, right. Um, well, I, <laughs> I really loved playing uh, the bandit version of Regina. And, and it's when uh, Snow White and the evil queen swapped roles. And Jen Jennifer Goodwin got to play the evil one and I got to play the bandit sort of, you know, Princess Snow. And um, I loved it. And there was something just really sort of like grounding and earthy about her. And I really relate to that part. I'm very sort of hippie, grounded. I love camping. I like being in the woods. You know, these are other parts of my character. And um, I had just fun. I had fun frolicking in the woods and, and jumping over logs and being a kid in that way. So that was one version yeah. I really loved. Yeah. Um, let me, okay, this is a good one too. Um, what do you, oh, this is a good, good one. It's Frida hey. Kahlo. Frida Kahlo, how are you? Um, <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> um, what's your hidden talent? Uh, I would say I love riding horses. People oh, know that. Too. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty good rider. Um, what other? I'm a pretty good dancer, too. <laughs> I guess singing is still being developed, <laughs> but... You know, um, that's probably what it is. And, and I'm also very musical. A lot of people don't know that about me, but I have a great musical ear. And there was this episode that was a musical. Right. And you were singing. I was, and it was amazing. And that was, I thought it was great. That so, was a talent I didn't even know I had. It kind of, I was always fearful of doing something like that. And actually doing that episode is what, gave me the idea that I wanted to do an, a musical on Broadway. And that's what yeah. really pushed me forward to, into that direction. So tell me about that episode. That was amazing. It was totally unexpected. And I thought you were great. Thank you. Thank you. They actually I was surprised. That I must tell you I was surprised. Because that's a lot to ask of an actor. But you just that's jumped it. into it. So tell how did it come about? Did you have to rehearse a lot? Were there some real nervous moments? So Adam and Eddie, our creators, said we are going to do a musical episode. And they said, don't worry, you're going to have plenty of time to rehearse. All the songs will be written for you. 
we're going to see everyone's sort of vocal capabilities and the songs will be catered, you know, to your voice and, and structured around what you can do. And um, so we had like a vocal test, basically. And, uh, and then they came and said, Lana, we're giving you a big dance number on top of it. You can dance, right? And I said, it's been some time, but yeah, I can dance. I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> I can dance. It's in there. <laughs> so um, I, I rehearsed for about three weeks. We all did, but I had the big dance number. So mine was, was a little more challenging, I feel, because uh, I was dancing and singing, and it was a big dance number. And I absolutely loved it. I, I wanted to rehearse every single day. I kept saying, please don't write me in the previous episode to the musical because I just want to dance and rehearse and sing every single day leading up to the musical episode. And they did keep me light. And I, I honestly, I, I, could be, I could do that every day. I really could. It was yeah, one of the, my favorite episodes to film. I, 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 I was so surprised. I think everybody was. So did you guys like take a lot longer shooting that episode than anything else? We did. And it really changed the energy, not just within the actors that were playing and singing, but the crew. Everyone was humming. Everyone was singing. Everyone loved that episode. It just, it was different for everybody. And we had a blast. Yeah, I could tell. No, that's great. So it, interesting that that sort of gave you the feeling that you should go and do Broadway. Mm -hmm. I personally love that idea because I think there's nothing like going to the theater and being on stage and actually being able to express yourself in a totally different way and have to do it every day, twice a day and still be fresh. Well, you know, I really come from this school of, and this is how I approach everything in my life. What terrifies you the most, go towards. You know, don't run away Absolutely. from it. Actually lean towards it. And you're going to grow and discover so much about yourself. And you're going to overcome the fear. So my greatest fear of being on stage and singing in front of, a, you know, 1,500 people and dancing, it terrifies me. And yet... I want to experience it because I don't want to be bound by this fear. I want to, I want it to dissipate. I love it. Yeah. So let's talk because we have very few minutes and I sure. want to just get really into something that I think we can share with everybody. Spirituality, how we get through difficult periods, especially now. And what, what, where are you with your own spirituality and your own growth? And what, what can you tell other people that will inspire them to reach deep inside and move towards the light? Well, this is a really beautiful question. And thank you. I was with a dear friend of mine yesterday and, and he sell it, said it so eloquently. And I, and I could relate because this, has been my experience, especially during this quarantine, which is I, I felt I was living so much in the fear, which is what I was talking about, lean towards it and, and go into the fear. And I feel now I have settled in just my faith and having faith, having faith in God, having faith in that I am on the right path. And um, through meditating every single day, through prayer, it has been the most rewarding and the most validating. And I keep getting these signs. My feather is a big symbol of mine. And I keep seeing them on my path. And especially as of late, which is just a confirmation and validation that I am on the right path. And even in this quarantine, often we look and go, God, I can't believe this is happening. It's awful. It is awful if you just choose to focus on how awful it is. And like you said, if, if you are taking the position of what, am, what could I do with this time? The world has never been paused and not in our lifetime. And no. we have the opportunity to do the things that we've always wanted to do, whether it's, you know, read more or write or develop a new skill, learn a new language. I look at all of this as such an incredible gift. 
It has humbled me. It has made me be so appreciative of everything that I have, the people in my life. My faith in God has grown. My faith in, in the people around me and in within myself has grown. Um, meditation is, is really helped me get quiet and see things that I truly, truly desire and want within myself and learning how to manifest again. It's really um, deepened me as, as a person. And it's also made me discover that I could really go down any path because I don't know what's happening in my industry. But every job and every opportunity is a gift and it should be celebrated. And it's maybe I want to be doing this, but, but I'm doing this and celebrate that. So I've, I've really learned um, to accept everything that I have right now and, and just celebrate it. And that, is, uh, that has been the truest and most beautiful gift that's come out of this time. That's so beautiful. Truly Thank beautiful. you. Thank you. And on that, I just want to give you some regards from somebody who is a friend of yours, but also admires you a great deal, yeah. Radha Mitchell. Oh, and I love she, her. I love her too. And she sends love to you. Thank she you. actually um, has been quarantined, so I haven't seen her for a while. And she's very, she's family to me. So, but she told me when I told her today that I was going to, talk to you she said oh my god I love her she's amazing and such a beautiful deep person it's been such a pleasure oh likewise so wonderful this has and been one of the most beautiful and spend some quality time because I think you're wonderful and thank you so much for giving so much of yourself to everybody who's watching um really thank you thank you for having me this has been such a beautiful experience i love meeting you i would love to spend time with you in person me too. as soon <laughs> so as we'll, we can as, yes as yes. soon as we can but god willing we will very soon and so, god bless and, and you. god thank bless you, all of you, you out there i love you all please tune into cinema c-i-n-e-m-o-i we are on the iOS now, and so all you have to do is get your iPhone, put cinema in your app store on the search, and get it because you'll see the most amazing movies, fashion, all this live entertainment. It's really beautiful. And please, please, Lana, keep on this track. You have so much to give to all of us. Thank you, my love. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, bisous. Big kiss.